concept of Sankofa is represented by a mythic bird that is looking back as it flies forward, but it holds within its beak an egg, which is the future. But, so it holds it gently, it holds it reverently and respectfully, but goes back and connects to the past to in order to give birth to this future that's a future full of hope and a future full of vibrancy and a future full of love, compassion, and all those things needed to transform a community. Because so much of black history has been, as one person said, lost, stolen, or strayed. Um, we were taught, I know I was taught growing up that um, in the 50s and 60s that blacks in the United States had no history, had no past. You know, they, we knew we came from Africa, but we didn't know where. So the bird is looking back to draw on the wisdom, experience, and spirituality and tradition of the past of families and other ancestors in order to move that into the forward motion of the body. So the head goes back to grass in order to reconnect with the body. That body could be the physical body of individual, the body of a community, the body of Christ. And so we have adopted the Sankofa bird uh, for our symbol to talk about what we want to do. And what we want to do, that is the Sankofa Institute for African American Pastoral Leadership, comprised of our, made up of our council of elders, um, or one of which I am, is to try to look forward to enhancing African American pastoral leadership in the 21st century by drawing on, looking back, and drawing on our own history, tradition, and faith for the future. I think the Sankofa Institute is here uh, to place, to help people be change makers who can use Sankofa principles of recovery and moving forward in ways that transform the churches and communities they're in. Sankofa wants to reach out and to have communication across the traditions within Christianity. We, there are a lot of differences, but then there are a whole lot of similarities. And so I think it's good to expose the students to those similarities because they don't have to fear the differences. They don't have to be embarrassed by differences or think one is necessarily better than the other. And so I think it's good to have that kind of training and awareness before they get out to do ministry. Now that we are in dialogue with people from other cultures, other faiths, other denominations, the, the conversation is rich, but it's also a rich experience to go back and find out, well, just why do we do that? Or what happened that we got here to where we are? And how can we impact the present and the future in a way that brings hope for people who are uh, sensing a hopelessness, that brings uh, love and compassion and transformational uh, ministry uh, that really heals the woundedness in our world, not just in the African American community. Because, you know, it, it, if you impact one community, it's going to have the ripple effect, like throwing a stone into a pond, you know how the uh, ripples go out. Uh, that's our hope. That's our hope is that, that we who engage in, in uh, spiritual formation, in leadership development, in academic studies, uh, theology, history, sociology of religion, uh, spirituality, religious education, Christian education, uh, uh, outreach to the community, that, that we somehow will be transformed ourselves and transform our communities by the way we live. One of the things that, that continues to excite me about Sankofa is its location. San Antonio is a remarkable resource. It is a city of ethnic diversity. It is a city of financial and economic diversity. It is a city that has great ministries and it is a city in need of great ministries. And so in many regards, you couldn't ask for a better place to do what Sankofa does. Um, because of the way it will always be paying attention to an international conversation. Their past, 
their present, and their future. I want them to, like I did, um, find themselves in history, in American history, in Christian history, in world history, and on that foundation be able to build towards something else. Like all the books, I've written eight books, uh, written six and co-edited two. All of them were done because they didn't exist. Uh, I didn't write them for myself, or I wrote them because I said, this is what, you know, why can't I find anything on this subject? Okay, then I need to, you know, you, you hope somebody else will write it. So, oh, I guess I'm going to have to write it. Uh, because you get tired of trying to paste all these articles and chapters together. So I need something that's going to cover this whole topic, like my last book on African-American spirituality. There are many books on black spirituality. And, but what I tried to do was take it all the way from Africa to today and to show that continuity that still existed. So that's what I want. I want them to be able to see that continuity, to experience it, to live it, and then to continue to pass it on to those coming after them. Twenty years from now, I would like to say that if you look at prominent churches in Texas and the Southwest, you will see that as head of staff or members of the staff to have Sankofa graduates. I would hope that at the head of the relevant nonprofits are going to be Sankofa people. Globally, we can really take this thing on the road, that is to say, how to enhance African work and pastoral leadership domestically in a global 21st century. I think we also need to talk more about how to get students ready to govern America. My hopes is that it will be endowed, that in 200 years, Sankofa will still be here with, of course, obviously new leadership and more students, that more people will graduate with their MDivs, their demons, their PhDs, out of the richness of the tapestries that go to make up Sankofa, that other people across the nation, across the world will know about it, that there will be waiting lists coming to San Kofa that an event like Taste and See would have a thousand people to show up and that the school will literally have to expand to be able to start to have satellite campuses and able to encompass it and do the ministry of San Kofa to meet the need. Everyone. Why? That all may be one when we understand one another's stories and faith and that we believe in the same God, we know the same God, we have the same challenge. Uh, I may have to come at it from a different way than a white person, but a white person needs to know this story as much as I do. I, I, I can't say more because I really need to know the story. But the white person needs to know the story. The Hispanic person needs to know the story. When we can affirm each other's story and lift them up and not be in competition and not be dividing, that all divisions cease. Glory, hallelujah. I'm for that. And so everybody should come, especially people who see themselves as leaders. But those who don't even see themselves as leaders might find themselves as leaders if they would come to this program. So, and not just the program, to do studies, and serious study, that will lead them to feel whole inside of themselves and feel they understand their brothers and sisters as well, that they, in a way they never did before. In a way that doesn't collect guilt and paralysis, but collects openness and understanding and dialogue and visioning for a future full of hope together in a creation that God gave us. So I think everybody should come. If you want to be a Sankofa scholar, you're in for a wonderful time. You're not in for an easy time. Part of what really energizes us about Sankofa is this is a spiritual discipline. And we take that quite seriously. Um, and you're going to read more. 
than you thought you would. You're going to write more than you thought you would. You're going to think more than you thought you would. And you're going to pray more than you thought you would. And so part of the process is you being a more robust spiritual and theological person on the other end of that. I would say welcome. First, I'd say get ready to take off. Be excited about this new journey and know that you will not be the same. And I think that's a great thing. I think that's a good thing. I would highly recommend a Sankofa to someone. They want to do spiritual direction. If they want to expand their horizons in terms of the black church experience, which is not monolithic. If they want to know more about history and more about the world and the impact of God and the impact of people that care about God. If they want some fellowship. If they want great programming, great worship, then I think St. Cole's place to come. So I would welcome them and say, get ready for it and come and be willing to change. And if they're not willing to change, then I still say come because I think at a certain, certain point, then there's an old adage that when the student is ready, the teacher will come. So if I think they can get to St. Cole, then what will need to happen for them will happen. I would just invite um, everyone to come taste and see what Sankofa Institute for African American Pastor Leadership has to offer here at Oblate School of Theology in San Antonio. And I think that uh, another world is possible and we'd like you to be part of that journey with us toward that new world.